Designing robots that can think and rovers that explore Mars for NASA are just a few of the projects that Georgia Institute of Technology professor Ayana Howard works on. But perhaps one of her proudest achievements is what she's done to open the door for fellow female engineers and promote diversity in the science and technology fields. On this week's Full Frame Close-Up, we meet Ayana Howard, a diverse teacher, leader, explorer, and innovator whose imagination is on the cutting edge of technology. There it is. My name is Ayanna Howard, and I am a professor in the School of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Georgia Tech. I focus on robotics. Well, robotics engineering is, is quite unique. Um, it's a combination of all the disciplines. It's electrical computer engineering, it's algorithms, computer science, it's some mechanical engineering, and all of this wrapped around with even some cognitive science where you interact with people. Okay, so there's two ways of determining trust. Either A, change in behavior, or change in like the surveys. I've been interested in robotics for, for many, many years. Um, started in middle school. There was also the time where they started showing women in positive light. So there was Wonder Woman and, you know, saving the world. But there was one show in particular called The Bionic Woman, and I decided then I wanted to build The Bionic Woman. Um, because on the show, they had these doctors working on, you know, repairing her and adding the parts. And so I was like, okay, I have to be some type of medical doctor. Uh, so I, I went into high school thinking I was going to major in some aspect of science and go to medical school. Oh, oh that's cool. I didn't realize it was touch. Okay. So trying to figure out then, well, how do I build a bionic woman? It was like, well, you know, there's this whole field of the people that actually built the parts that were attached to the bionic woman. And that was called engineering. And so that's really where I switched from focusing on, you know, thinking about medical school to thinking about being an engineer. Because it's functional, right? So you're sitting on the couch, it's like vacuuming. All of a sudden it's like, okay, this person's been sitting watching TV for 30 minutes. They would come over and have an interface and be like, hey, why don't you like follow me? You know, <laughs> try to get them up off the couch. I am a geek. I love technology. I love building. I love designing. I love changing the world with my mind. I mean, that's the whole definition is being passionate about something. Geek. This is Houston. Say again, please. Oh, uh, Houston, we've had a problem. When I was 18, um, I landed an internship at JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Roger, restart, and everything's live. Started really working on this whole field of robots and space and actually got paid for it. But at JPL, I knew that I at least at that time knew where my career was going. I knew that then I was going to be a NASA for life. I didn't anticipate that I was going to leave NASA until I was much, much older. But what happened, we had an accident. We had the shuttle accident. Just taking a few hits here. We're right up on top of the tail. We've also lost the uh, nose gear. If I didn't go, I didn't expect uh, this bad of a hit on comm. And at that point, NASA basically exed all research. And I decided I loved research, I loved robotics, and so I looked at, you know, where could I do that and still interact with people and help with in terms of development of people. And academia was the next logical answer. So I came to Georgia Tech, Georgia Institute of Technology, uh, joined the School of Electrical Computer Engineering, um, and started my own lab. It's my life's goal to basically be a role model. Dr. Howard has been a great help in being able to see a woman, uh, someone who I can identify with and relate to, be so successful in what she does, not only in terms of robotics and the research that we do here, but just in general. 
My name is Alexis Coates. I am a fifth year graduating senior here at the Georgia Institute of Technology. So this is Robbie. Uh, Robbie will be intended to help children with autism to communicate their emotions more effectively through uh, gestures and um, emotion recognition tools. So right now he is made to see goes through emotions. So right now we're about to see sadness. Uh, so he's going to sit down, fall out, say I am really sad, and then get back up. The user or the parent or the caregiver will know right away if this particular set of gestures occurs, match it with this emotion. I think the most important part is that it gets rid of the ambiguity, which can lead to frustration on the child's part. <laughs> so we're still working on the kinks, but you know, we're getting there. <laughs> Now I design robots for children with special needs. I love that. I love going into a clinic and seeing a child's eyes light up because we enable something and enable them to do something that they weren't able to before. And so maybe they're not moving in the correct way or they're delayed in walking. What happens is they go to a clinician or a therapist, typically human, and they work with a therapist and then they go home when they're supposed to continue. And children just don't do it uh, for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's the parents aren't comfortable with the therapy. Sometimes it's just time. And so my robots allow that therapy to happen in the home environment. The robots allow the clinician to provide their services 24-7. So what we want to look at is um, if a robot makes a mistake, does it change a user's trust in it? If I look in the past when I was my first job with NASA and the comments that were made by the engineers, uh, my first job meeting I had one of the older engineers call me girly. Oh, we got a girly on the team. Okay, mortifying as an 18, 19 year old. Now I don't see those things. It's not about women in engineering, it's about this diversity of experience to really solve the problems that we have in our world. Well, that's it for this week. Join the conversation with us on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Get the latest news headlines and connect to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Weibo. So until then, I'm May Lee in Los Angeles. We'll see you next time. Oh! <laughs>